Lesson 11 at the playground. Playground equipment. Hello. Today we're going to quickly review uh, certain parts of a sentence and then we're going to study phrases. As usual, first we need to learn some new vocabulary. A playground. A playground. A playground is an area for children to play on, especially at a school or a park. A playground director. A playground director. A playground director is a person who organizes games and activities for children at the playground. A drinking fountain. A drinking fountain. A drinking fountain is a piece of equipment in a playground that produces a stream of water for children to drink. A wading pool. A wading pool. A wading pool. A wading pool is a small pool uh, which is not deep for children to play in. A seesaw. A seesaw. A seesaw is a piece of equipment that children play on made from a board that is balanced in the middle so that when one end goes up, the other end goes down. A slide. A slide. A slide is a large structure for children to slide down. A jungle gym. A jungle gym. A jungle gym is a large frame made of metal bars for children to climb on. A swing. A swing. A swing is a seat hanging from ropes or chains for children to play on. Now we have a swing set. A swing set. A swing set is a tall metal frame with swings hanging from it. Okay, over here we'll put a sandbox. A sandbox. A sandbox is a special area of sand for children to play in. Badminton. Badminton. Badminton is a game like tennis, but played with a shuttlecock instead of a ball. A hula hoop. A hula hoop. Well, a hula hoop is a large ring that you swing around your waist by moving your hips. Shuffle board. A shuffle board is a game in which you use a long stick to push a round flat object towards an area with numbers on it. A frisbee. A frisbee. A frisbee is a piece of plastic shaped like a plate that you throw to someone else to catch as a game. A jump rope. A jump rope. Well, a jump rope is a long piece of rope that children use for jumping over. A few more now. Dodge ball. Dodge ball. Dodge ball is a game played by children in which you try to avoid being hit by a large rubber ball thrown by other children. Hopscotch. Hopscotch. Hopscotch is a game using squares marked on the ground in which each child has to jump from one square to the other. And lastly, this game Hide and Seek. Hide and Seek. Hide and Seek is a children's game in which one player shuts his or her eyes, the other children go and hide, and then the first player tries to hi uh, find the other children. Let's review these now. A playground, a playground director, a drinking fountain, a wading pool, a seesaw, a slide, a jungle gym, a swing, and a swing set, a sandbox and badminton, a hula hoop, shuffleboard, a frisbee, a jump rope, Dodgeball, hopscotch, and hide and seek. Sentence structure.
Let's quickly review what a subject, verb, and object, etc. are. The noun, pronoun, or gerund that comes at the beginning of a sentence is the subject. So please have a look at these sentences. Mary loves the playground. The slides are lots of fun. The apple tree is in the middle of the playground. My brother always pushes me on the swing. Well, in the first sentence, Mary is the subject. In the second sentence, slides is the subject. In the third sentence, apple tree is the subject. And in the fourth sentence, brother is the subject. A verb is a word or a group of words that is used to describe an action, an experience, or a state. The verb usually comes after the subject, as in these sentences. Larry always goes on the seesaw. The playground was closed after the flood. Gina can skip rope the best. My friend is a playground director. In the first sentence, goes is the verb. In the second sentence, was closed is the verb. In the third sentence, can skip is the verb. And in the fourth sentence, is is the verb. Let's practice. Well, I think this short review should be easy for all of you. Rosa, what was, the f what was your favorite thing to do at the playground when you were a child? I like to go down the slide. It was scary at first. What was the subject and verb in your sentence? I is the subject, like is the verb. Excellent. And Monica, what didn't you like about the playground? My old boyfriends were always there. Good. Though, what was the subject and verb in your sentence? All boyfriends is the subject and where is the verb. Okay, good. And Lewis, where was your favorite playground? My favorite was near my school. Okay. Uh, subject and verb in your sentence, please. Favorite is the subject and was is the verb. Great. Thank you all. Phrases. Now that we remember what the subject and the verb are, let's have a look at phrases. Let's begin our study of phrases by looking at the prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase. Please take a look at these sentences on your screen. My mother was standing in front of the playground sign. The slides are near the seesaw. They left for the playground at three o'clock. We stayed at the playground with the babysitter. In the first sentence, my mother was standing in front of the playground sign. In front of is the preposition. Playground sign is the object of the preposition. And in front of the playground sign is the prepositional phrase. In the second sentence, the slides are near the seesaw. Near the seesaw is a prepositional phrase. In the third sentence, they left for the playground at three o'clock. At three o'clock is the prepositional phrase. And in the fourth sentence, we stayed at the playground with the babysitter. With the babysitter is the prepositional phrase. Now, a phrase is a group of words that does not contain a subject and a verb. In these prepositional phrases, there is no subject and there are no verbs. There are only objects and prepositions. Well, let's practice this now. This should all be fairly easy for you. Uh, let's use prepositional phrases in our sentences. Lewis, when did you used to go to the park? I always went on weekends. I usually stayed for four hours. Very good. And Rosa, who did you usually go to the park with? 
I used to go with my best friends. I wouldn't go without them. Good job. Monica, why did you used to go to the playground? I loved the swings and the slides. And I always played for, for lots of hours on them. I always sat uh, beside Rita on the swing. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Hank left for the playground about one o'clock. I never liked climbing up the steps to the top of the slide. We can only stay at the playground until noon. It was great having a playground near my house. Read and repeat. There are different kinds of phrases and also a phrase can be the subject of a sentence as in these examples. Many young children are at the playground. To be a playground director can be a difficult job. Playing on a jungle gym can be dangerous. In the first sentence, many young children are at the playground. Many young children is a phrase. It is the subject of the sentence. In the second sentence, to be a playground director, the phrase and the infinitive is used as a subject. In the third sentence, playing on a jungle gym can be dangerous. Playing on a jungle gym, the phrase and the gerund playing is used as the subject. A phrase may also come in the middle of a sentence. These are called participle phrases because the present participle is used. Have a look at this example. Over 500 people representing all of the area's neighbourhoods were at the playground fair. In this sentence, representing all of the area's neighbourhoods is the phrase. Phrases may use a past participle also. These are called past participle phrases. We always go to Hayes Playground, named after Rutherford Hayes. In this sentence, named after Rutherford Hayes is the phrase. Well, let's practice. What did you like to do when you were a child, Lewis? Going to the playground was my favourite. I taught all my uh, friends, how to use a hula hoop. Excellent. And how about you, Rosa? I always wanted to go, but I had to take care of my brothers. My brothers, needing a babysitter, took up all my time. I'm sorry. And Monica? I went all the time. Many of my friends loved the playground, and we always threw frisbees and played dodgeball. Thank you. Good job, everyone. Now, looking and listening is next for us. Look and listen. Ken used to play a game at the playground called Kick the Can. Riding a bicycle is fun at the playground. To throw a frisbee 100 yards is very difficult. Kevin, wanting to play badminton at the playground, started to cry when his mum said no. Read and repeat.
Now let's look at another kind of phrase. We can make phrases using as or than. Positive adjectives and adverbs are used with as. Let's have a look at the sentence. She doesn't like the playground as much as her brother. The mall isn't as pleasant as the playground. Well, in the first sentence, as much as her brother is the phrase, and much is an adverb. In the second sentence, as pleasant as the playground is the phrase. Pleasant is an adjective. Comparative forms are used with than. Please take a look at these examples. This playground gets more crowded than the playground on Elm Street. The Park Street playground is less noisy than the J Street playground. In the first sentence, than the playground on Elm Street is the phrase. In the second sentence, than the J Street playground is the phrase. Well, let's practice. Okay. Let's compare the playground you went to as a child to one near your home now. Monica. I don't like the old uh, playground as much as I like the one near my house now. There are many th new things now. Great. And Rosa? I like the slides at the old playground more than at the playground down the street. Of course, I was a child then and everything was exciting. Good. Luis? I didn't go to playground much when I was a kid. I think I have more fun at the playground now than when I was a kid. I like to read a book and watch the children. Good answers. And now maybe you are ready to look more than you are to listen. Or maybe you're ready to listen more than you are to look. Here we go. Look and listen. Ted likes the swings as much as the seesaw. Amy doesn't enjoy playing hopscotch as much as Marie. That sandbox isn't as full as this one. It's not as much fun playing frisbee with someone who doesn't know how. Read and repeat. Now let's look at two more uses of phrases, of cause and of purpose. Let's look at phrases of cause first. Phrases of cause. Have a look at these sentences. Because of the rain, the playground was closed. The children were sad because of the broken swings. Due to the humidity, the wading pool was full. The children are dirty due to the wet sand in the sandbox. Due to and because of are phrases of cause. Due to and because of. They mean as a result of or caused by. As a result of or caused by. In the first sentence, the playground was closed as a result of rain. In the second sentence, the children were sad because the swings were broken. In the third sentence, the humidity caused the waiting pool to be full. In the fourth sentence, the children are dirty as a result of the wet sand. 
In these sentences, the prepositions are followed by phrases. When a phrase begins a sentence, a comma is used usually after the phrase. Let's practice. This should be easy because you all know because. Lewis, why didn't you go to the playground last night? I didn't go because of my age. I'm too old for playgrounds. I see. You could be a child at heart, Lewis. Did you go to the playground last week, Monica? I didn't go due to the cold weather. I only go, I usually, I only go on weekends because of the handsome brothers and uh, their little sisters and brothers. Okay, Rosa, did you and your sisters go to the playground often as a child? No, we didn't. Due to the distance from our home to the playground, we didn't go too much. Good job. Now, due to your need to practice and because of your need to learn, let's look and listen. Look and listen. Because of the naughty children, the playground director was angry. We lost three frisbees because of bad throws. Because of the rain, our shuffleboard game was postponed. Monica was so happy because of the new seesaws. Read and repeat. Now let's look at phrases of purpose. Phrases of purpose. Please have a look at these sentences. In order to reach the drinking fountain, Fred had to hold his brother up. She took a bus in order to get to the playground quickly. In order for a child to use the seesaw, he or she must be five. In order to, in order to plus verb, or in order for plus noun, are used to indicate an aim or purpose of achieving something. In the first sentence, the boy can only get a drink if Fred holds him up. In the second sentence, she will only get to the playground quickly if she takes a bus. And in the third sentence, a child must be five or he or she can't use a seesaw. When a sentence begins with an order to or an order for, a comma usually follows the phrase. Well, let's practice. Monica, how do you often, how do you usually get to the playground? In order, in order to go to the playground, I ride my bicycle. Good. Lewis, when you were a child, what did you have to do in order to go to the playground? I had to clean my room and take out the trash in order for me to go to the playground. Very good. And what about you, Rosa? In order for me to go to the playground, I had to bring my brothers and sisters. That's good. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, in order for you to practice, let's look and listen. Look and listen. In order to go to the park, the children must be nice to each other. The swings must be fixed in order to make them safe. In order for Mike to use the seesaw, he must stop crying. Hazel should be good in order for her to play hopscotch. Read and repeat.
The last thing we will look at today are phrases of time. Phrases of time. We looked at a couple of these earlier when we looked at prepositional phrases in the lesson. Have a look at these sentences now. By 8 o'clock, the playground was closed. Up to 1997, there were no seesaws at the playground. Within six weeks, the playground will have new badminton nets. In the first sentence, by 8 o'clock is a time phrase. By time. By means not later than or at or before. So by 8 o'clock, not later than 8 o'clock, at 8 o'clock or before 8 o'clock. In the second sentence, up to 1997 is a time phrase. Up to means until. So up to 1997 is until 1997. In the third sentence, within six weeks is a time phrase. Within means inside or not past a period of time, not past a period of time. So within 90, no, within six weeks, here we go, means inside six weeks or not past six weeks. Now within can also mean inside or not past a distance. Let's practice some of these now. Tell me about the playground nearest your house using phrases of time. And Rosa, you can start. Up to 1990, there wasn't a playground near my house. Mexico is not a rich country. Very good. And Monica? When I was younger, I wouldn't go within one kilometer of my playground at night. Uh, it was dangerous and there were gangs there. Really? Yeah. Louis, what about you? By 1997, I had finished going to the playground. I was a big boy. I'm sure you were. Okay, thank you everyone. Now within a second, we will look and listen. Look and listen. The playground still hadn't been finished by 2003. Up to May, Toddlers had to be accompanied by their mothers to the playground. The new sandboxes will be finished within two weeks. By 9 p.m., the park will be empty. Read and repeat. Review. Now let's do some exercises. This one should be very simple. We studied verbs and subjects. Let's fill in the blanks with the appropriate subject first. Monica, here's one for you. Okay. The something were chasing the frisbees. The something were chasing the frisbees. That's a good one. The dogs were chasing the frisbees. Good. The dogs were chasing the frisbees. Rosa, do this one. The something lost his job because the children didn't like him. The something lost his job because the children didn't like him. 
The playground director lost his job because the children didn't like him. Poor Good. guy. Poor guy. The playground director lost his job because the children didn't like him. Okay. Lewis, your last something. Love to play hide and seek at the playground. Something love to play hide and seek at the playground. I'll use a pronoun. We love to play hide and seek at the playground. Excellent. We love to play hide and seek at the playground. Now let's put verbs. The playground something at 10 a.m. The playground something at 10 a.m. The playground opens at 10 a.m. Good. The playground opens at 10 a.m. Monica, do this one please. Georgie, always something on the swing set. Georgie always mm, on the swing set. Georgie always swings on the swing set. Georgie always swings on the swing set. And lastly, Rosa, put the pen down. My dog, something, when I am on the swing. My dog, something, when I am on the swing. My dog barks when I am on the swing. Good. My dog barks when I am on the swing. Great. Thank you, everybody. Now, let's do another exercise. You're going to give two sentences, each using a prepositional phrase. Lewis, you are at the slide. Well, I'm the first. Um, I love going down a long slide. I don't like uh, to wait in the line for, to use the slide. Very good. Rosa, you are playing hide and seek. I always hide behind the tree. My best friend always hides under a slide. Super. Monica, you are at the drinking fountain. Okay. Children should wait in front of the drinking fountain and Ken is waiting for a drink. Excellent. Thank you. Now let's do another exercise. Let's make participle phrases using present or past participles. Monica, you go first. The playground, something at noon, will close for the festival. The playground, beginning at noon, will close for the festival. Good. And, Lewis, this time you go second. This section of the playground is called Hooker Field. Something after the Civil War General Joseph Hooker. This part of the playground is called Hooker Fields, named after the Civil War General Joseph Hooker. Fine. Rosa, this one's for you. The children... Something for the seesaw got lost. The children looking for the seesaw got lost. Great, thank you. And now let's do another exercise using phrases of cause and purpose. Okay, Monica, you can give me two sentences using because of. And Rosa? You give us two sentences using in order to. And Lewis, two sentences using due to. Monica? Because of the sick children, the wedding pool was closed. And the phrase here is because of the sick children. Okay. And the children had to finish their hide and seek game because of Jimmy. And again here the phrase is because of Jimmy. As always, Monica, a great job. Rosa? We had to leave early in order to get to the playground. In order to get to the playground is the phrase. Uh -huh. uh, in order to use the sandbox, you must have a shovel and bucket. In order to use the sandbox is the phrase. Good work. And Lewis? Lost again. Due to my father's illness, we didn't go to the playground yesterday. The phrase is due to my father's illness. And Charlie, yes, Charlie couldn't go to the playground due to his remarks to his mother. The phrase is due to his remarks to his mother. Fantastic. Now we have time for one last exercise. Let's make this a quick one. Now, I'm at the playground and you are my mother. So tell me when you want me to come home 
using a phrase of time. Lewis, you can go first. Be home by six. You'll be punished if you aren't home then. I'll be home. Okay, Rosa. Please be home within an hour. Very good. And Monica. You can stay. You can stay at the playground up to eight. Oh, Monica, you are my favourite mother. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. And now, in order for you to practice, it's time to listen and write. Listen and write. Listen and write these sentences. Number one. Three boys were fighting at the playground. Number two. A child had fallen from the swing set. Number three, Molly loves going down the slide. Number four, there is a memorial at the playground called Burnside Memorial. Number five, the woman, hearing her crying child, ran to the shuffleboard court. Number six. Due to the ice, the jungle gym was closed. Number seven. We couldn't go to the park because of my naughty sister. Number eight. In order to get to the playground, you must go up North Street. Number nine. In order for me to swing. Someone must push me. Number ten. Within four hours, six children had gotten hurt playing dodgeball. Now check your work. Number one. Three boys were fighting at the playground. Number two. A child had fallen from the swing set. Number three, Molly loves going down the slide. Number four, there is a memorial at the playground called Burnside Memorial. Number five, the woman, hearing her crying child, ran to the shuffleboard court. Number six, due to the ice. The jungle gym was closed. Number seven, we couldn't go to the park because of my naughty sister. Number eight, in order to get to the playground, you must go up North Street. Number nine, in order for me to swing, someone must push me. Number ten. Within four hours, six children had gotten hurt playing dodgeball. Now read the story and answer the questions. Read and answer. Norton Playground, named after Hank Norton, is the biggest playground in Chicago. It has over 100 swings, 40 slides. And 35 seesaws. It is about six square kilometers in size. In order to see the entire playground, you must walk for hours. By the time you finish, you will want to sit down at Ollie's Refreshments for a cold soda or a refreshing malted milkshake. The playground opened in 1964. And had doubled in size within six years. Due to the number of players, a huge area was opened for badminton in 1971. Within five more years, three frisbee fields and ten shuffleboard courts had opened. From 1976 up to now, few changes have been made. A large waiting pool for children. Was completed five years ago. There is talk that they might have horseback riding.
by 2006. Now listen and answer the questions. Number one, who was Norton Playground named after? Number two, where is Norton Playground? Number three, how many seesaws does it have? Number four, what must you do in order to see the entire playground? Number five, where can you get a bottle of Pepsi? Number six, when did the playground open? Number seven, why did they open a badminton area? Number eight, what opened between the years 1971 to 1976? Number nine, when was the wading pool completed? Number 10, are there any additions planned for the future? Now, check your work. Number one, who was Norton Playground named after? It was named after Hank Norton. Number two, where is Norton Playground? It is in Chicago. Number three, how many seesaws does it have? It has 35 seesaws. Number four, what must you do in order to see the entire playground? You must walk for hours. Number five, where can you get a bottle of Pepsi? You can get a bottle of Pepsi at Ollie's Refreshments. Number six, when did the playground open? It opened in 1964. Number seven, why did they open a badminton area? They opened a badminton area because of the number of players. Number eight, what opened between the years 1971 to 1976? Three frisbee fields and ten shuffleboard courts opened. Number nine, when was the wading pool completed? The wading pool was completed in 1999. Number 10, are there any additions planned for the future? Yes, there may be horseback riding by, by 2006. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Practicing English. Hey guys, I was walking to school today when I saw this amazing new park. Do you mean the one on the way back to school? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, it has a great fountain in it and the kids were climbing all over these huge plastic dinosaurs. They also have a big climbing area, you know, like a fake wall kind of thing. Yeah, I saw that one too. It is a great park. I took my class there the other day. They loved getting out of the classroom and sitting in the grass. I have to say, I liked it too. Uh, what are those things with the horses that go round and round? Do you mean a carousel? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I've heard of students talking about this park. Due to the noisy surrounding downtown, this playground seems to offer a lot of peace and quiet. Well, in order to, to survive in a city like this, having a place to go like the park is a great advantage. Because of numerous requests to the city council, people have gotten a lot of improvements in the city. But it could definitely use a lot more green, quiet places. I should check this place out. What else is there? In addition to the carousel and the fountain, there are swings, a couple of seesaws, a jungle gym, and benches, lots of benches and tables. I saw people playing chess and listening to music, and there's a walking path too. 
and a place to ride bikes. If you tell me I could use my inline skates there, I would be incredibly happy. In fact, I saw a lot of people doing that too. Cool. Yeah, it was a big surprise for me to see this place. I never walked to school that way before, and all of a sudden, there's this great big playground. Do you know what used to be there? No, I don't. What used to be there? Well, there's an old building there, but it hadn't been used for ages. I think it was a hospital or something. Well, with all the changes they've made, the land is being put to much better use. Since we have the afternoon off, why don't we go for a walk and you can see this new playground for yourself? Well, that's a great idea. I think later this week I'll bring my skates and get some exercise between classes. Believe it or not, I love messing around in all these climbing things. I was quite good at that stuff when I was a kid. Hey, there's one thing no one has asked yet. Is there any food there? Food? Yeah, Dave. While you might want to relive your childhood and get some exercise, I happen to like to relax in the park. Well, that's a good question. In order to have a perfect playground day, refreshments are needed. Well, yes, I think I saw a food place there. It wasn't really big, but I'm sure you could get things to eat. Wait. What? I just remembered I do have a favourite playground activity. What is it, Kerry? I just love slides. Do they have slides there? Well, in fact, the one they have is about four stories high. It empties out into a pool of water at the bottom and... Tarek, you had me going for a while. Ha! Huh, you should have seen your face. You really believe me. I should have known you were giving me a hard time. Okay, come on guys, grab your stuff and let's go get some fresh air. This should be fun. Yeah, come on Carrie, we better hurry. There's a big line for that four floor slide. Alright, so you had me going. Let's go. Tarek, should be very careful on those monkey bars. Something bad might happen.